A day of drama as Rangers go into administration. Whilst today is a very sad day for Rangers and its fans, the administration addresses a terrible uncertainty that has been hanging over the club. Very anxious time, obviously, for everybody associated with the club. I want that club to survive and to thrive. It's not the end of the world, even though some at Ibrox might feel that way. But eventually, administrators will want to sell on assets to a different company, though possibly controlled by some familiar faces. Craig White obviously is in a very advantageous position, but I understand he might also have security over a number of the assets as well. Glasgow Rangers will not shut, and it's the fans that will keep it all. I can reassure Rangers supporters that the club will continue and can emerge as a stronger and financially fitter organisation. Lots of questions and not many answers so far as Rangers try to cope with a crisis. We're back to on-field business tonight. You'll see all the SPL weekend action and we'll hear from former Kilmarnock and Hibs manager Miksu Patalainen, who's now in charge of the Finnish national team. First, let's reflect on another dramatic day for Rangers. A big show of defiance outside Ibrox yesterday with the club in crisis. The game against Kilmarnock sold out as Rangers plunged into administration. Supporters are angry at the financial mismanagement of their club, but fully supportive of the job Ali McCoist is doing against all odds. At the match was Al Lamont. Lucas corner, Edu's header off the line. Who is Liam Kelly on the post? Still the chance for Rangers. It's Bocanegra at the back post. But Edu, the man who came closest to the opening goal. Nelson. Gordon for Hay. McGoyan's misjudged that, and Heffernan now with the chance. Picks out Shields. Oh, it's an opening goal for Kilmarnock. And Dean Shields silences the capacity crowd, but for that small corner of Kelly fans. Who Goyan committed himself needlessly. That was the start of Rangers problems, and Shields increased them. It's a lovely goal in fairness. Heffernan picking out his strike partner. And Dean Shields did the rest. Steve Davis losing out. And this is Paul Heffernan. He should really have done better there. You can tell by the look in his face that he knows that. Kelly getting the break of the ball off the referee. Nice pass from Fowler. And Heffernan has to hit the target. Lucas corner. That was Bocanegra with a glancing header. And again, Cami Bell not called into action. Heffernan. And a lovely turn by Gary Hay. Here's Ben Gordon. Is it two for Kilmarnock? Again, Ben Gordon really has to at least test Alan McGregor from this position. It's on his favoured left foot. Just has to put the laces through it. Broadfoot looking for options. Aluko in for McCulloch. Breaks away a Broadfoot. There's David Healy with the equaliser. Oh, it's chopped off. It's offside against David Healy. That's extremely close. It was a good finish from Healy, who's taken out of play by Fowler. And the goal doesn't stand. Heffernan off and running once more. Nice cut back. There's Fowler! Inches wide. There's another really good move from Kilmarnock. Heffernan with the vision to pick out the runner Fowler, who only just fails to hit the target. Rangers looking for an equaliser before half time. It's a look -out. Has been one of the few who looks likely to provide it. Cami Bell at the second attempt clutches the ball on the line. I think this took a little nick off Gary Hay, which caused the confusion. Bell recovers. 
claim for a handball, dismissed by the referee. Oh, Papac goes in heavily. Oh, it's a red card for Sasha Papac. A rueful smile on the face of the Bosnian. A heavy touch there. And you can see why the red card is shown for the challenge on Liam Kelly. Liam Bryan's with no hesitation. Ben Gordon cuts out the pass. And Kelly moved forward on the counter-attack. Gordon once more. Perry dives in, he's past him. Comes off the arm of Bocanegra. No chance. That was going to be a penalty, though, given the distance from the player to ball. And there's no movement of the hand of Bocanegra either. Gary Hay picks out Fowler. It's Sissoko! Oh, what a goal that would have been. A venomous shot by Sissoko. Didn't miss the top corner by that much. Well, the coast corner, there's McCulloch, the whistle's gone. And Rangers again denied an equaliser. Well, Ian Bryan says, Shellick was guilty of holding here. Well, there doesn't look to be a great deal wrong with that. And Rangers, justifiably, I think, miffed. We all really, really wanted to to get three points effectively for the supporters, that's what we wanted. Um, you know, it goes without saying, we go out and try and do our best and try and win games for the fans at the best of times. But today, is it's really, really painful that we didn't manage to do it for the fans. Yeah, really painful for Rangers, Mick, who hugely pleasurable for Kilmarnock, your old team. Um, we played some fantastic football yesterday and maybe the goal from Dean Shields just summed it up. Yeah, but I must say first thing that um, that um, the way Rangers supporters came out and back the club was absolutely fantastic. But uh, um, Kilmarnock, they are well capable of passing the ball and causing upsets. And you know they they beaten Rangers before. Dean Shields' goal here is a, is a fantastic passing move from from Gary Hay. Here we go, nice weighted pass behind the defence. I don't know why Goyan sells himself self like that, but here Dean Shields good first pass and takes it early. And I think that. Makes it makes it more difficult for McGregor to say that um, great goal, great passing move. It certainly wasn't a fluke of a win when you look back at the really good chances Kilmarnock had to add to that Dean Shields goal. Three of them in the in the first half. Yeah, and you would have thought that the Rangers start you know started the game really really um, fast and uh, and making sure that Kelly has no 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 chance in the game. But uh, you know it was it was the vice versa. Um, here we go again. Um, good good link up play from. From hips, well, Ben Gordon there a little bit, a little bit in a strange position. Uh, wasn't a shot, wasn't a chip, probably in two minds. And then this um, is James Fowler. James Fowler's chance. You know, he's been making some fantastic runs from the midfield to the to the penalty box, and uh, another opportunity there. Now Sissoko, he doesn't need to blast it. He doesn't need to put any power on that shot. Just guide it to the back corner. Is is always in the net. But uh, but uh, nevertheless, a bright, good passing performance from Kilmarnock again and uh, and uh, deserved victory. So the damage to Rangers could have been considerably worse. Disappointingly, there was a return of the sectarian singing for which Rangers have been given repeated warnings and punishments and they're keen to stamp it out. Some of it was directed towards referee Ian Brines and these may be three reasons why. Uh, firstly, Mixu offside given against David Healy here. Well, from here, it looks like David Healy and Ben Corden are level. Um, and uh, so, but uh, obviously the linesman, the linesman is in better position uh, to see that where the, where the heel is a little bit more advanced that, uh, than Ben. So um, the, that's that's why the goal wasn't given. Here we go, the red card. There's no no question about that. You know, I think I think Sasa Papac knows that straight away. A little bit. I wouldn't call it red mist, but uh, you know, it was a it was a, a reckless tackle, and uh, just as well um, Liam Kelly jumps there because. Uh, it was a dangerous tackle. And what, what was wrong with this uh, when Lee McCulloch put the I, ball in the net? I can't see anything wrong with it, to be honest with you. Um, and, and look, um, I think James Fowler's reaction is quite significant here as well. If you, he's, he's been told that he's been, uh, he's been held here and he just walks away from it like, like nothing. Look, um, these things happen in the at the corner kicks all the time. 
So if there's a foul every time, you know, there would be no goals scored from um, from corner kicks. Uh, and I, and I did get the feeling as well at Ibrox yesterday that a Rangers goal would have changed the whole atmosphere and, and changed the complexion as well. Especially an early goal. Yeah. Um, you know, it would have uh, changed the game totally, uh, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, all credit to Kilmarnock. You know, they, they went there with their, with their attitude, nothing to lose, passed the ball well and caused problems to Rangers and, uh, and they did that. It's uh, Rangers in crisis, a, a massive story, obviously, in Scotland and around the UK. But uh, you were saying that uh, it's reverberating really around the world, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is unbelievable that you know such a club like Rangers can can go into administration. And uh, you know, I, we we had a press conference last week in Finland, uh, leading to the to the Austria game, our next match, and um, and the journalist asked me, you know what I thought about uh, you know the, the situation at Rangers and uh, astonishing astonishing but because Rangers and Celtic you know they are regarded as big um, you know secure clubs um, um, all, all over Europe and all over the world uh, with a fantastic support so uh, you know it is astonishing that uh, we are where we are. When you left Kilmarnock you left your assistant Kenny Shields in, in charge you'll be delighted to know that he's keeping a low profile and not attracting any controversy whatsoever. Has he not done that? <laughs> Well, the missing handshake here. Yes, there was a, there was quite a lot said between those two before that match. And uh, um, now Kenny is a Kenny is a you know good honest guy and uh, full-hearted. Um, you know he wants his club to. Do, he needs to work on his celebrations. You know it's, <laughs> a, it's not quite Mourinho style yet. <laughs> but um, no, no, he's a, he's got he's got fantastic ideas about football. He's a, he's a good coach. Um, you know he wants to play football the, the right manner. Um, and um, and you know. We all say things sometimes that uh, maybe we regret afterwards, but uh, you know, all in all, Ken is a good guy. And Kilmarnock are in the League Cup final, and that win yesterday makes it back-to-back -back wins against Rangers for Kilmarnock for the first time in more than 50 years. I mean, that's incredible. Unbelievable, unbelievable. To beat, you know, Old Firm twice, um, you know, in the season is a, is a fantastic achievement. There's uh, Manu Pascal is winner. In the earlier match, and uh, you know, he's, he's been a revelation this season for, for the club as well. You know, such a reliable defender and uh, chipping in, scoring some goals as well. And could Kilmarnock be a, a big problem for Celtic at Hamden in a month's time? It will be interesting. Um, I think Kilmarnock will go there and you know, stick to their, their, their plan of passing the ball. Um, usually, the cup finals go that. The way they go usually is that uh, old firm they they start passing it they start dominating from the early doors and uh, the other the other team doesn't really get hold of the ball at all but uh, you know it'll be interesting you know Kilmarnock they they were three 0 up against Celtic at uh, at Rugby Park early in the season they beat in Rangers twice uh, it will be a it will be a smashing final I hope.